Hello everyone, welcome to this new exercise series for chapter 6 of our BOS 325 investment course. In this video, we're going to be looking at problem number 6. So let's read the problem together. It says, suppose that the returns on the stock fund presented in spreadsheet 6.1 were minus 40%, minus 14%, 17%, and 33% in the four scenarios. So here, as you can see, we're gonna to need to refer back to this spreadsheet 6.1. Let's see the requirements first. A, would you expect the mean return and variance of the stock fund to be more than, less than, or equal to the values computed in spreadsheet 6.2, and why? So let's go back and see those two spreadsheets that the question is referring to I included them here for convenience so we can refer back to them as you can see here we have the stock fund details and the expected rates of return based on four different scenarios so the in the case of a severe recession the fund is expected to generate negative 37 percent returns in the case of a mild recession that would generate a negative 11 percent normal growth 14% and in case of a boom 30% okay and the expected return or the mean is calculated here to be 10% right so what's the difference we have here as you can see we have lower expected returns in the case of a severe recession and higher expected returns in case of a boom okay so again going back to the requirements would you expect the mean return and variance of the stock fund to be more than less than or equal to the values computed in spreadsheet 6.2 uh, here because the question is ask, asking us to um, express our expectations we don't really need to do any calculations we just need to compare the numbers and based on our knowledge and statistics um, generate an answer and see what would be our expectations okay so because the expected returns have a wider range so we do expect the variance to be greater right so that's the first thing we uh, con uh, can comment on for part a is that we could say for example uh, without doing any calculations okay we note that the severe recession is worse and the boom is better okay thus there appears to be a greater variance yet the mean is probably the same since the spread is equally large on both the high and the low side. 
Okay. Is that it? So the mean return, okay. Would you expect the mean return and variance of the stock fund to be more than, less than, or equal um, to the values computed in spreadsheet 2 point, or 6.2? So let's see those as well. Here in 6.2, we can see the variance here and the standard deviation. Okay. Okay, the highest probabilities, as we can see here, for the severe recession only has a 5% chance or 5% probability. The mild recession only have 25% probability, whereas the highest probability is allocated to the normal growth and the boom. Okay, and since our scenario has higher normal uh, growth expected return 17 percent and a higher boom expected return based on that we can also add that the mean return should be higher since there is higher probability allocated to the higher returns. Which are the expected returns for the normal growth and the boom or the economic boom scenarios okay all right so that's for part a you can put this in your own words you don't have to stick to what i have exactly or to exactly what i have written but as long as you get the uh, get your idea across i would be okay with your answer all right let's move on to part b part b says calculate the new values of mean return and variance of the stock fund using a format similar to spreadsheet 6.2 and confirm your intuition from part a so now the question wants us to actually run the numbers and see if what we have answered here in part a is actually uh, correct so does the, the numbers or the calculation uh, the calculations corroborate what we have uh, expected Okay, we're going to follow the format in spreadsheet 6.2. So let's go back and have another look. As you can see here, this is the format that is followed. <clears throat> okay. So we'll do something similar. So I will say part B. We do have a scenario and then probability and then we have rate of return okay okay and then we have the probability multiplied by the rate of return so we'll call that, we'll give these um, letters or denotations. So let's call this A, and this is B, this is C here. So here we're gonna do B multiplied by C. Okay, and then we'll have Sorry, let me start higher up. We'll have deviation from expected return. OK. 
Okay. This will be column D, and this one is E. And here we will square the deviation. So we'll say E squared. Okay. And this will be column F. And finally, we need to multiply the squared deviation by the probability. So that would be B multiplied by F for the last column. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Let's lay down the scenarios now. We have severe recession. We have a mild recession. We have normal growth. And we have a boom scenario. Okay. Let's go back to the probabilities. Right here. Five percent, twenty five percent, forty percent, and then thirty. So zero point zero five, zero point twenty five, zero point forty, and then zero point thirty. Okay. Now the rates of return are given to us in the question. Let me highlight those. Sorry. Minus 40%, minus 14%, 17%, and 33. So minus 40, minus 14, 17, and then 33. All right. Now let's jump to our calculators. Negative 40%. So negative 40 multiplied by 0 0.05. That would be a negative 2. Okay. <clears throat> Next one. 0.25 multiplied by negative 14. That would be negative 3.5. Round it. It's negative point four four. So let's round it up, and then seventeen multiplied by point four zero. That will give us six point eight, and finally point three zero multiplied by thirty three. That will give us nine point nine. Okay. Now adding these. Four, we should get our expected return. So let's do that. Minus two, minus three point five, plus six point eight, plus nine point nine. That's eleven point two zero. That is the expected return for this stock fund. Now we do have the mean, which is the expected return, right? So the deviation from the expected return is going to be the absolute value difference between the expected return and the rate of return for each scenario. Okay? So. <clears throat> We say 11.2 minus 11.2 or just turn it into absolute value. So that will be plus 
minus and then another minus between brackets minus 40 that would be 51.20 to the left so that's minus okay I always suggest to my students just for your understanding if we assume this is a timeline and the mean that we calculated is right here 11.20 percent how far away the expected return would be from sorry the, the scenarios return rate of return from the expected mean okay so the negative 40 is going to be somewhere around here on the timeline so here we have the zero point and here we will have negative 40 percent right how big is this gap what's the distance between the rate of return of that scenario and the expected mean okay and the distance here is going to be this 40 and another 11.2 okay so you add those together and the sign is going to be for the direction so if the rate of return for the scenario is to the left of the expected return, then it would be negative, just like the case we have here. Okay, uh, this might help you visualize this because sometimes uh, it's tricky to understand or to uh, fill the column of the deviation from the expected return because of that. So now let's move on to the next one. And here we would have the negative 14% somewhere around here. So the gap in this scenario would be the negative 14 to the zero point, and then another 11, 20, okay? So 14 plus 11, 20, that's 25, 20, and it's to the left, so it's gonna be a negative, negative 25, 20, okay? Between the 17% and the 11.20, the that's going to be 17 minus 11.2, that's 580. And finally, between the 33% and the 11.2, that would be 2180. Just Let's stick to the same format, one decimal place. All right. Now for the next column, all we need to do is just square these numbers. Right? So, when you're squaring, of course, the negative sign doesn't really matter. But if you want to put it in your calculator, as long as you understand that there's no squared number that is going to be negative. So all the numbers here are going to be positive. Okay, so 51.2 to the power of 2, that's 2,621.44, okay, 25.2 squared, that's 635.04. And 5.8 squared, that's 33.64. And finally, 21.8 squared, that's 475.24. Okay. And for the final column, we're going to multiply the squared deviation by the probability for each scenario okay so for the first one 2621.44 multiplied by 0 0.05 that will be 13 sorry 131.07 next one 635.04 
multiplied by 0.25, which is the probability for this scenario. That will be 158.76. And the next one, 33.64 multiplied by 0.4. That will be... <coughs> Three point six four multiplied by point four. That's thirteen point forty six. And for the last scenario, four hundred and seventy five point twenty four multiplied by point three. That would be one hundred and forty two. Point fifty seven. Okay. Now adding all of these in the last column, we get the variance, and from the variance we can also derive the standard deviation as we learned in the lectures. Right? So I'm gonna add all of these together. One three one point zero seven plus one fifty eight point seventy six plus 13.46 plus 142.57 okay and that gives me let me write it in red 445.86 okay which means that standard deviation on this stock fund is going to be the square root of that which is 21.12 percent okay and that is the answer to part b it might look like it's too much but as long as you understand <coughs> the structure or the template of what we're doing then you can take it step by step it might take a little bit of uh, time but you will get to the results okay now what do we need to do let's look at the following part part c it says calculate the new value of the covariance between the stock and bond funds using a format similar to spreadsheet 6.4 and explain intuitively the change in the uh, covariance okay so let's look at 6.4 here's the table right here again we're gonna have the scenario the probability but this time we're gonna lay down <clears throat> the deviation from uh, the mean return for the stock fund based on our findings and part B so we're not gonna use these numbers but for the bond fund we're gonna use these numbers okay and with that change, we're going to see how is our covariance is going to be uh, affected or changed from what we have uh, right here. Okay. I'm going to have to go to the following page. Parts. C. Let's call it covariance. calculation okay and again we're gonna have a column for the scenario name another column for probability okay and then we're gonna have the <clears throat> deviation from the mean return for the stock fund, let's call it stock F, and the bond fund, okay? And as usual, we'll give these letter denotations, so this is A, B, 
and then this one is C and this one is D and for the next column we're gonna have to multiply the probability by <clears throat> the deviation from the mean for the bond fund and um, multiply that by the probability okay so sorry we will multiply the deviation from the mean of the stock fund by the deviation from the mean of the bond fund so we'll call this c multiplied by d okay and then for the last column we're gonna take the result from this so let's call this column column e and multiply it by the probability so e multiplied by b okay again same scenarios severe recession mild recession normal growth and a boom scenario the probabilities will stay the same 0 0.05 for the severe severe recession and 25% chance for the mild recession and then 40% chance for the normal growth and finally 30% chance or probability for <coughs> the boom or the economic boom okay now we'll copy the deviations uh, from the mean for the stock fund from our calculation here I will highlight it and copy it just to show you that this is where we got this from okay and I'll copy the deviations from the mean return for the bond fund from the spreadsheet right here minus 14 10 3 and minus 10 minus 14 10 3 and minus 10 okay then we're going to multiply the deviations from the mean return for each of the funds okay so negative 51 point 2 multiplied by negative 14 okay. seven hundred and sixteen point eighty okay next one negative twenty five point two multiplied by ten that will be negative two hundred and fifty two five point eight multiplied by three seventeen forty And finally, 21.8 multiplied by negative 10, we're going to get negative 218. Okay. Now we'll multiply our results in this column by the probability. Okay. So 716.80 multiplied by 0.05. That will be 35.84. Next one, negative 252 multiplied by 0.25. That would be <coughs> negative 63.0. And then 17.4 multiplied by 0.4. That would be 6.96. And finally, negative 218 multiplied by 0 0.3. That 
that would be negative 65.40 okay adding these together we get our covariance so let's run the numbers 35.84 minus 63 plus 6 Points ninety six minus sixty five point forty. The covariance here is negative eighty five point six. Okay. Now let's see what's the difference between the covariance that we got here after changing the stock fund to what we had. And spreadsheet 6.4 notice the covariance is 6.4 is negative 74 okay so as you can notice here that the covariance has increased and that is because the the stock returns are more extreme in our uh, scenario here than the ones in spreadsheet 6.4 okay so the normal, the, the severe recession case is more extreme. The boom case is expected to generate uh, greater returns. So this makes the uh, tendency for stock returns to be poor when the bond returns are good and vice versa, even more dramatic. Okay. The question did not really ask us to comment, but in case you'd like to show your understanding you can add a similar comment in your own in your own words but when it comes to the calculation this is how you calculate the covariance and in the previous step this is how you calculate the expected return and the variance and from the variance you can find the standard deviation as we said because of the relationship as we have explained before that the standard deviation is basically the square root of the variance so once you get or you calculate one of them you can uh, simply figure out the other okay this is a relatively long question question number six but this is how you would solve a similar question i hope that you found this video useful and until i see you in the following exercises take care